What's up everybody? Tiffany Outdoors here today. We're going to do another DIY custom tank stand. Stay tuned. There's the hawk. Before there was a Tiffany Outdoors, there was Tiffany the Farmer. Want to use the turn when possible? No, we're not. So this tank stand is similar to the 40 gallon tank stand we did for Joe's Bearded Dragon Iggy. This one is going to be a little bit different. Let me show you my plans. Okay, so the tank is going to go here. And this section here is going to be an open storage for Joe's mealworm bins. She's got some mealworms, two bins, so we're going to have space for that. And then in the bottom section, then we'll have down there storage. All right, let's begin. And so this rack is going to be a total of, well, what I'm, let me turn the camera around and explain. But here's my cut list. I need 26 and a quarter for those, four 30 and a quarter, and six 11 and one quarter. The bugs are out here. <laughs> so the stand for the two different tanks, one is a 20 gallon long and the other one is a 40 gallon breeder. And what I want to uh, try to achieve, we'll see how close I get, is I want the tanks to be the same height or as close as possible. So I'm going to raise that tank up, the 20 gallon long up to meet the top of the 40 gallon breeder. So my measurements are the cut list that I showed you above or showed you previously. And let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to drill for my pilot holes. So what I did was I lined all my boards up now I'm going to use this piece of wood as a spacer because when I screw this together, it's going to go like this. And I'm going to screw either from the bottom or the top to connect the boards to make my frame. So I'm going to lay this sideways like this. And then I'm going to drill two pilot holes here on each board on each end. I'm going to be using a 1 8 inch drill bit to make my pilot holes. Now I'm going to begin the assembly on my frame. I'm going to be using two and a half inch screws. They are exterior gray, but this is what I had on hand. One frame assembled. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the other one and I'll come back to you. My next step is to connect the two frames together 
And that's going to involve a pocket hole jig, which I have right there. And I need to drill two holes on each side to connect the, the two frames together. And what I'm going to do is mark it so I don't hit the screws that I use to connect the frame itself together. I know, that's a whole bunch of words, isn't it? Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. Alright, so what I want to do is mark this board. And I want to make sure I want to miss these screws here and here. So I'll mark to put a hole here and one here. And I'll do the same on this side here and here. So I don't run into these screws. Alright, let me go ahead and make my holes. So I have my two marks here, and what I want to do is make sure that these two pieces here where the drill bit goes in to drill a hole, I want to make sure those marks line up with these. It doesn't have to be perfect, but at least close enough. And then I'm going to clamp down my piece. Oh, I'm going to have to adjust this clamp. There we go. You want that to be tight so it doesn't move around on you when you're drilling. Okay, and then drill my holes. And that's what the hole looks like. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Same concept. Make sure my line lines up with this tube here, or barrel, I guess that's what it's called. Clamp my piece down and drill my holes. going to be using one and a half inch pocket hole screws and these are very very strong they can they can uh, make a joint super strong Nice. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these and then I'll come back to you. Now that I'm at this stage, I learned from last time, I'm going to go ahead and paint this top, top section here and go ahead and get that part done. I'm not that concerned about the sides because that's going to be covered up anyway. But one of these sides is going to be the front. And I want to make sure that that stays the color is going to be. This one is going to be white. The other one, the other tank stand I made was red. This one's going to be white. I want to work on the shelf and I have this leftover piece of half inch birch and I'm going to cut this down and put it in 
there and I need to make some brackets or some some shelf holders to hold the shelf up on here and simply what I'm gonna do is take a I don't know maybe a six or eight inch piece of two by four and screw it in to it and just let the shelf rest on it and then screw it down um, first thing I want to do is cut up some two by fours some small pieces I got a scrap pile over here and I'm going to make four the same size I don't know what size yet let me see what I got all right so I got three pieces this is the shortest piece so I'm going to make three more and these this one measures two and five eighths so I'm going to cut three more Found another piece about the same size. It's off by just, gosh, probably not by just, it's just barely, barely, barely the same. Oh, wait, maybe it does measure the same. Hey, two scrap pieces exactly the same size. How did that happen? <laughs> so, let me show you guys a quick tip. Instead of measuring out two and five eighths, two and five eighths, just use your piece as a template. Done. I've got my four shelf blocks cut out and now what I want to do is I want to sand the surface that's going to be exposed where we can see. It's kind of rough so I'm going to take my belt sander over it and smooth it out. I'm done with the sanding now I want to concentrate on the shelf and I'm going to cut it to the dimensions where it will just fit inside here and then and then I'll figure out where to put this level it out and then put my my um the shelf blocks in all right first let's cut this down all right now to cut this. So I cut this a little bit tight. Let's see if it fits in there. Yes, it will fit. So what I'm going to do is sand it down to its final length. I got it to where it'll fit in there. I have to struggle a little bit, but that's okay if it's snug. I'm okay with that, but it fits in there. Now to cut the depth. Okay, now I need to figure out how how high or how much of a gap to leave here now the mealworm bins that Joe has the tallest one is nine and a half inches and the other one is nine inches so I need to figure out how how much space to give her to get in there to feed and take care of the mealworms so I want to start off with 14 inches from here to here and see where that puts me. What do you guys think? I think it looks good. Plenty of space for both of her mealworm bins and colonies. This is going to work out perfectly. Alright, I think I'm going to go ahead and screw that down and screw everything in. And then I'm going to work on wrapping the bottom section and doing the, um, the bottom shelving. Alright, I got this laid down so I can get a better measurement to make sure that is really 14 inches from here to here and, and I'm pretty sure that, that that measurement will work just fine so I'm going to go ahead drill some pilot holes and some screws
It's so hot out here. All right, I'm gonna do the other two and then I'll come back to you. Now I can start wrapping this. Now, in order to not have a gap here, I need to put a two by four right here in that space just to keep a gap on that shelf. Let me show you what I mean. So when I put the wrap or the boards on the outside of this to wrap it, there's going to be a gap here, right there on the inside, and I don't want that gap there, so I'm going to cut it two by four and put it right in here. It goes right in between this gap on both sides. It doesn't matter structurally, it just aesthetically looks a lot better and looks more finished with that gap not being there, so I'm going to close it in. That to me looks so much better. It looks a lot cleaner and it's going to look a lot better aesthetically with that, with that, uh, that gap not being there. Now I need to work on the shelf, the bottom. I want to line the bottom like I did the other one. Just do the whole entire bottom. Flip this upside down and put a sheet there. I need to go get some wood too. And then I'm going to do the sides. I have a few pieces, a few scrap pieces that I can do the sides, but I'm going to need more wood to do the back and bottom and the front, of course. All right, I'm going to go ahead and measure those out, get them on, and then I'll come back to you. And just like with the other build, I'm going to use brad nails all the way around just to tack that down. And I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side. I got the bottom piece on. It doesn't entirely cover the whole entire bottom and that's okay. If this wobbles or anything, either way I have shims that can fix that. I'm trying to use up as much scrap wood as possible without having to buy a whole sheet of plywood. So this is going to work out. I have a piece for the door and I got a piece for the back. So this is going to work out great. Only thing I have to do is go to the store and get some more hinges. But other than that, I have everything I need to finish this. I have the door cut out, so that's done. So now I need to turn my attention to the spacer for the hinge. I got the hinge there and I'm going to trace out two spacers on this wood and cut it out with my jigsaw. Now I'm going to take my belt sander and clean these up and make them all nice, smooth, and even. I painted the spacers red and I'm going to paint the door white. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the door and the rest of the stand and let that dry. And in the meantime, I can go out, get my hinges, and then the paint will be dry by the time I come back. Alright y'all, I got the hardware on, I got the door on, the hinges on, this thing looks amazing. I'm very, very happy with the results. Wow. Just wow.
happy with this. Two similar builds, built different but similar. And there are issues with it. Now, would I be Tiffany Outdoors if it was pretty and perfect? No. <laughs> Let me show you. So this door, this door has a slight bow. So I put the magnet here, right as close to the top as possible, whereas down there, I put it a little bit further down. But this helps hold the door close a little bit better. You have to push it a little bit to make it stay closed, but there is a, a little bit of a bow, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Peacocks. I love them. All right. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.